Hey, what's going on summoners? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Crumbs and today we're going to be taking a look at five of the worst macro mistakes you can make. League of Legends may seem simple at first glance, but when you take into account how much planning and macro is needed to win the game, it gets a bit difficult. We've seen these mistakes in every elo, so don't feel bad if a lot of these relate to your playstyle. We'll be diving into what the mistake is, what makes it so bad, and what you can do instead. Starting us off strong, we've got to cover the NA special, the one and only, the NARAM. This tactic can be seen in regions all around the world, but it has earned its reputation as being the go-to for most solo queue matches in North America. This strategy consists of side laners taking their first turrets, then grouping mid. After the mid tower is taken, the entire team sits mid as they embody their inner Howling Abyss and fight to the death. This often leads to a really bad split in experience, gold, and can stall games well past your team's power spikes. While there are very specific situations in Challenger where five-man grouping is beneficial, we highly doubt you'll come across them. So instead of having your team fall behind in every way possible, let's look at an alternative that can positively impact your games and help you win. A great solution to the classic NARAM is to split your team up. A generic macro decision for the mid game is to send your mid and top to the side lanes while having your AD carry and support sit mid. This will not only allow them to break mid turret faster, but it will also let your team have a faster rotation to objectives and or jungle fights. If your team is refusing to split up properly, it's important to take the game into your own hands and secure yourself a lead. Go to a side lane or to the mid lane if needed and make sure you get your own experience and gold. Try to avoid being with others unless you're the AD carry. The main goal is to get yourself as much gold and XP as possible so that you can be strong enough to carry the game. Once you've hit your power spikes, you can look to group up with your allies and fight around objectives. But if you're not really a carry champion, continue to shove waves for experience and gold, but look to provide pressure by shoving waves, then hovering your allies mid by sitting around the jungle. If they're ever collapsed on, you can quickly rotate to be there to help them. Overall, Fixing the NARAM mentality can be really difficult since most players really like the idea of just grouping in a single lane. Unfortunately, with how experience and gold works, it can set you and your entire team behind very quickly. Before we continue on to our next big macro mistake, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. We offer tons of guides and videos to help you take your gameplay to the next level. But if courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24 7 to help you out. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive back into the video. The next mistake is playing team deathmatch. Similar to the NA RAM problem, a lot of players fall into the trap of constantly playing for kills. They're looking for fights whenever possible and just try to force anything they can. It's almost to the point where this could be a Call of Duty cosplay and the first team to 50 kills wins. Unfortunately, League of Legends isn't that type of game. You could end the game with 5 kills for your entire team and it would still be a valid victory. The same is said where you can lose a game even if you have 100 kills. The only sure way to win the game is to destroy the enemy nexus and to do this, you need to actually play for objectives. Avoiding the constant mindset of team deathmatch is really important if you're looking to climb. It'll reduce the amount of time wasted and it'll stop the enemy from randomly getting fed. I'm sure you've all experienced it before. The enemy Vladimir is down 20 CS and is 0-5, then after 5 minutes of random fights, he can now 1v9 the game with his new 8 kill lead. The best thing you can do is to ping your allies when it looks like they're going for a random fight. While we wouldn't advise spam pinging them, it's beneficial to ping them a few times then say that there's nothing to fight for. From here, you can call out your team's next move in order to win the game. Now you may be asking, Crumbs, how do I know what counts as a random fight? Well, you need to ask yourself what you're fighting for and what winning said fight gives you. Are you fighting for dragon control? Cool, then make sure you all know that's the overall goal so that you can group around the dragon, get vision, and do it as quickly as possible. Are you fighting for a turret? Perfect! Use your pressure to take the turret so you can move your vision forward and play with your team safely. Are you fighting because someone got caught? Well, you need to think about what happens because of that. If you guys take the fight and lose, do you lose Baron? Do you lose a dragon? Do you lose turrets? Maybe you can help your allies and win the fight and then do Baron after? Whatever it may be, you need to think ahead and understand what exactly you're fighting for at all times. If you're fighting for the sake of fighting, it's most likely a lost cause. 
It takes some time to build up, but eventually, you'll create a habit that can let you shot call and save your allies from pointless deaths and fights. Overall, it's extremely important to avoid fighting just for fun and to instead look to fight with purpose. It's what'll let you take action immediately after and not waste any time. Moving on to our next mistake, we've got wasting your time and specifically your objective power time. During a lot of solo queue games, we've seen players will win a fight then just sit around idling. They'll often walk in circles, take a few CS, then randomly reset for no reason. Instead of this, plan out your next move as you're doing the objective or before your fight even happens. If you're fighting for Dragon, what's your plan after you win the fight? Is your bot wave shoving towards them? Can you catch a few extra waves for a key item? Is there enough time to invade the jungle and clear the enemy's farm? Whatever it is, make sure you're using up your time wisely. You always hear this talk about tempo this, tempo that, but a lot of people waste a ton of their time by not making decisions fast enough or being decisive. This often leads to scuffed plays as the enemy is able to react to your own moves because it took you too long to do them. Speaking of wasting time, we often see players take key objectives like Baron or Elder Dragon and then do nothing with them. When you have these buffs, you're extremely powerful in one way or another, so don't spend the precious time you have with these buffs by AFK farming camps or randomly recalling for small purchases. Use these buffs to pressure the enemy as you work to siege their base. Time and time again, we watch players get barren and spend 60% of the time just clearing waves and playing ping pong with the enemy. Make a plan with your team on how you'll use these buffs, then execute it for maximum efficiency. Now before we move on, let's not forget about our favorite pro guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what is one mistake you have seen people make during your rank grind? Personally, it's the mistake we just covered, not using your Baron and Elder to its fullest extent. When just one person recalls for a mindless purchase, it forces the rest of the team to have to wait for them so that they can group up and really push that advantage. And that can be really frustrating, but that's my answer and we want to hear from you. So let us know in the comment section down below what you think. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video. The next big mistake we have is coin flipping objectives. This is also known as the burger flipping baron. More often than not, you will never want to 50-50 an objective while both junglers are alive or if your jungler does not have smite. If you find yourself in this situation, you need to have two to three people assume different roles as the objective is being done. One person should be dealing damage to the objective and should save their overall burst near the end. It's up to this person and the jungler to deal as much DPS as possible paired with smite in order to secure the objective. While these people are doing Baron, it's up to the others to zone off any enemies that can approach for a steal. Ideally, you don't have to zone off the enemy jungler from being in smite range, but if it comes down to it, you may have to use your abilities and damage to keep the enemy from approaching the objective at all costs. Another thing we often see with objectives is players randomly forcing them when they already have a massive lead and don't need to. If you're able to safely end the game without getting to Elder Dragon, there's no reason to stall it out and risk a steal or a misplay so that the enemy can make a comeback. Instead, use your lead to secure the victory with wave control and sheer power. If you really need to do an objective to end the game because your team lacks siege, then make sure you use your lead to properly secure vision and take the objective safely. No one likes to see a game completely turn around because of a single bad fight and a Baron or Elder steal. Finally, we've got a simple yet extremely common mistake, which is overstaying. Some of you may not look at this as a macro mistake, but it has awful implications for the rest of your team. If you decide to overstay for a few extra minions or a turret play, you can end up dying for free. This death gives the enemy extra pressure on the map and allows them to gain a lead. They can get extra experience, minions, turret plate gold, and on top of this, they can now set a vision uncontested and can use their extra numbers to collapse on one of your own allies. You may not always be the person that's overstaying and that's fine. However, staying quiet won't help your allies either. Be sure to set up vision to protect your split pusher if possible or hover an ally if they need a few extra minions. If you can't do any of these, then at least ping them where the enemy may come from as a heads up. At the end of the day, they may not listen to you anyway, but that's okay. Play around it by making your own cross map place. If they sent extra resources to punish someone who overstayed, use that time to get vision and control the opposite side of the map. Who knows, you may even trade a kill because of it. 
Overall, overstaying is a really simple concept and mistake that plagues the entire league community. It's inherently rooted in greed and can be a hard habit to break, but with enough time and practice, anything is possible. Before we continue on to the end of the video, if you want to join an amazing community of people like yourself that love lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So what are you waiting for? Join us! Nonetheless, let's get back into the video and take a look at our honorable mention. For our honorable mention, we have the biggest and easiest macro mistake to make, which is not prepping waves before objectives. In high-ranking and pro-level games, you'll often see teams fighting over mid-control so that they can secure Dragon. Alongside this, they'll often look to have their other waves shoved as much as possible beforehand. The reasoning behind this is that it does four key things. One, it allows them to safely move towards the objective and contest vision. Two, if the objective is not able to be fought over, they can now quickly rotate mid and take a turret in exchange. Three, if the fight at the objective is won, they can easily go to a lane that is shoving and take a turret and or spread out additional pressure. And finally, if the fight at the objective is lost, the enemy now has to shove multiple waves before they can finally begin hitting turrets or getting vision. Waves are not just ways for you to get gold, they are key components to high-level macro. Never underestimate the power of a shoved minion wave. And that sums up our video for today. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to join our Pro Guides family over at ProGuides.com where we offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you just won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video and as always, good luck on the rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.